So let's look at the um, the assumptions for Nova Anova. Um, <laughs> The um, first assumption is the level of measurement for the independent variable can be any level that identifies groups. Um, so it can be a nominal variable. You know, experimental condition one, experimental condition two, experimental condition three. Control group, that would be nominal. Uh, that would work. It could be some other grouping. Maybe you decide. Maybe you decide that you're going to take uh, uh, income, for example, and you're going to take people uh, income and you're going to bucket it and you're going to put them in groups. So you're going to have low, medium, and high. And that could also be a grouping variable that would be used. Typically, that wouldn't be advisable because there'd be other, probably better ways to answer. Usually we don't want to throw away information. In that case, we'd be throwing away information. So we had income from, you know, income in dollars, and, and we took that and we condensed it into low, medium, and high income. We're going to be throwing away a lot of information about income, um, and, and that generally isn't um, uh, what we want to do. But it, it, it would it would work uh, uh, for, for certain, and so. The independent variable has to be a grouping variable. Um, just make sure that what you don't do is use an interval or ratio level variable as your independent variable here. Uh, it just, uh, uh, you would almost never get that published. <laughs> and, um, and SPSS doesn't know any better. It might give you some warning uh, of some type, but but uh, and I, people have made that mistake in the past, and it, it is as close to a fatal flaw in the analysis as I think we can get. Uh, and so, just make a note that make sure that your independent variable clearly identifies groups. Uh, ideally, it, it is um, you know something that's measured nominally. But in some cases, it might be an ordinal measure of some type. That is, low, medium, high income would be an ordinal measure that, that would also work. And then the dependent variable, just like a regression, would be um, uh, um, interval or higher. So interval or ratio level. The dependent variable <coughs> is assumed to be normally distributed. So if you have problems with skewness or kurtosis, you would be well advised to uh, take some corrective actions to see if you can transform that to improve normality. And then this fifth or fourth? Fourth? Um, fourth criteria is, remember Levine's test from T-test? Uh, it threw some of us for, uh, 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 it, it was confusing uh, for me for sure when I first stumbled upon it or was first introduced to it. And I, I think I recall, as we discussed it here, uh, there's, there's some confusion around exactly what is that thing testing. Um, but we, that same, that same, the thing that Levine's test tested also applies to analysis of variance. And so we use a very similar, it's called the beam test. Uh, but instead of two groups, uh, we might have three groups or four groups. And so uh, the assumption is, is that the variance or the standard deviation within each of your groups, it is uh, approximately equal. And so we'll, we'll, we'll get to this, and we'll talk more carefully about this as we start looking at some examples. Um, and so it might still be a little unclear or foggy from 
when we talked about it earlier in the semester. But we're going to get we're going to get back to that, and I uh, will will do everything I can to make sure that that there's some clarity there and, and understand if if we're not quite there yet, um, just bear with me. And then the final assumption is that our observations are uh, thought to be independent of each other. Same same assumption that we had for uh, data that we collected uh, and used with our regression analysis. Same assumption that we have with data that we collected and analyzed with and in using a principal performance analysis or any statistical method that, that, that I want to Um So those are our assumptions. Big difference uh, from here in regression is the level of measurement for the independent variable is uh, a grouping variable. It's, it's nominally uh, measured or uh, in some ways identified. So it's, it's not a continuous, it's not a continuous <coughs> measure like we have with, uh, with regression. And so we're going to start, we're going to start with um, thinking about our um, dependent variable in our analysis and how we can partition the variance from our dependent variable. And it's, the, the, the purpose here is to give us some intuition behind how it is that ANOVA works, how it is that we're identifying whether there's significant Differences across my groups, and we just we, we're not going to, as you know, at this point in this class, we're, we don't delve deeply into the the math behind it, but we're going to at least try to uh, uh, develop some understanding uh, of, of of what is um, what is happening, and so we have um, the variability of our dependent variable, we can partition it into what we call between group variation and within group variation. And between group variation is, is exactly that. It's, it's the variation between your groups, between group one and group two and group one and group three and group two and group three, it's the variation between the groups. <clears throat> within group variation would be the variation within group one and the variation within group two and the variation within group three. And uh, in sort of a classical uh, case, what we have is between group variation that's made up of some <coughs> treatment or some manipulated uh, uh, feature that's a part of the data. And we have individual differences and we have experimental error. That's our between group variation. Our within group variation is just numbers two and number three. We just don't we don't have the we don't have the treatment effect. And if you sort of think about what we're what we're what we're looking at, the difference between between and within, you wouldn't expect because everybody within the same group has the same treatment. So you wouldn't expect there to be treatment effects within the group. Uh, but we would expect there to be individual differences, right? So regardless of what our dependent variable is, there's going to be individual differences that just make up the people that are in that group. Or the, if you're not studying people, you might be studying uh, another unit of analysis, make up whatever that thing is that you study. There is, there are differences, and that, that those differences contribute to some of the variation of the dependent variable, regardless of what you're measuring for your dependent variable. We all bring with, we all bring uh, a unique set of uh, personality traits, which um, 
fluctuates um, the dependent variable. Um, could be just because you're having a bad day, or it could be because you're somebody that has a, a, a very particular personality trait and you respond to a, 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 a stimulus and a set of questions in a very particular way. And then we also have, in both cases, we have experimental error uh, that, that, that could also lead to uh, variation. It could be, it could be things like um, just uh, unreliable measures would lead to measurement error. So to the extent that your measures are unreliable, we have, we, we have error in the, the measurement. So that would be, uh, that would be um, variation that probably would be captured mostly within the group. But there could also be, maybe, maybe in one of your experimental conditions, um, something, something is there's just some error that gets introduced for uh, a reason that, 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 that uh, could be any number of reasons. It could be um, uh, in one of your conditions, uh, it was uh, everybody that was in that condition came early in the morning and they were here at 7.30. And people at 7.30 respond to a stimulus differently than people that were here at 9.30 or 10.30 or 11.30. Uh, hopefully, we, you would set your experiment up in a way that you wouldn't have those kinds of problems, but we can't always do that. And so that could be an experimental error. It could be, it could be equipment error, that maybe in one of your conditions, there is just some mechanical, computer or otherwise, failure that's leading to some error that we would have uh, uh, within um, or between between our groups that 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 one group has equipment that is flawed or aired in some way uh, other groups don't have that so it would be it would be leading it would be the, the between group variation and and what we ultimately want to be able to do is to take to determine our the F, as in FS, which is simply determine what is my between group variance and divide that by my within group variance. And that uh, is distributed uh, 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 with some degrees of freedom for a numerator and a denominator. And we can look that up on an F table and we can determine whether we can determine whether uh, that ratio is, um, uh, is our between group variance significantly greater uh, than the within group variance. Um, and so, like we did with regression, we can look, we can look at our dependent variable and we can calculate um, we can calculate the F pretty, pretty easily just with a few simple statistics. And um, the example that we'll use to sort of motivate our work here, and then I'm going to give you a worksheet that you can apply this to a different set of data, is our dependent variable is how much the um, participants talk about politics with their family, with their friends, or with their coworkers. And um, it, it ranges from how many days a week is, is the way the question is answered. Ask and answered by, I never do it, so zero days per week. Or seven, every day of the week I talk to family, friends, or coworkers about politics. So that's our dependent variable. It's not very pretty, is it? If you look at the histogram, uh, we might try to do some transformations to, to, to correct that. Skewness is, um, is it significantly skewed? Why do you say that? It's punched up on the left-hand side. Yeah, and so it's positively skewed. Um, how do we, how would we do, how do we test, yeah, it, it looks like it's significantly skewed. 
Could we use, this is review, could we use those two columns to test that in a way? Yes. What would you do? Yeah, and then what? We get a number. Yeah. And and what are we looking? For? Let's say the number is less than one. Is that good or bad? Good. That's good. good. Greater than ten? Bad. Really bad. <laughs> uh, and, and how about three? Would be three would be bad. Uh, Two point five six is a number that sticks in the back of my head. I think that's p is less than point oh one. 1.96 would be p is less than 0.05. Uh, if the ratio is 1.96 or, or below, we'd say p is less than 0.05. And so clearly, if you divide 0 0.919 by 0 0.077, I don't know what that ratio is going to be, but it's going to be, it's going to be um, fairly large, and it's going to be significantly skewed. We don't need that necessarily to, to tell that from, from the histogram. But, but, um, but nonetheless, it's a review of what we talked about um, when we talked about uh, data normality. Um, so our dependent variable is how much they talk to their family, friends, and coworkers about politics. The independent variable is the participant do they self-identify as being a Democrat? Do they self-identify as being an independent? Or do they self-identify as being a Republican? So these are the three major political parties in the US system, for those that may not be familiar with our system. Um, and we can see that we have, in this case, 603 Democrats, 112 independents, and 300 and one Republicans. This comes from American National Election Studies, A and E S. Um, and um, the other little test that I have down here is Levine's test for equality of air variance, or probably just more. Um, Commonly, Levine's test for quality <coughs> of variance. And what Levine's test is doing for us, and this is this is this assumption from our list of assumptions, where the variances, wherever you see variances, you can put in the word standard deviation, right? It's the same thing, it's just the square root of it. So the variances or the standard deviations of the groups are equal. That is, uh, there's homogeneity of variance. And so Levine's test, which SPSS gives us, I'm just printing it out here, uh, tests that for us. And it's testing whether the 2.16 or the 2.18 or the 1.84 or the 2.08 are they significantly different from each other? And the assumption is, is that they're not. That's what ANOVA assumes, is that they're not in a meaningful way different from each other. And this somewhat confirms that for us, right? It's, it's 0.097, so it's certainly greater than 0.05, but it's, it's, um, it's, less than 0.1, so it's, but we, we, would be, we would be justified in saying that, that we've satisfied that assumption, uh, that the variances are um, not significantly different across our three groups. Right, so far so good? And so, which of the three groups talk most about politics? Their family, friends, or others? Which of the three groups? Republicans do, right? Uh, they, on average, 2.4 days per week report that they talk about politics with their family, friends, or coworkers. Uh, Democrats are just slightly 
uh, lower the mat, slightly fewer days. <laughs> uh, it's either the noise or the heat, and so I'm going to see if we can do the noise for a few minutes, or um, I might go show the door. Does anybody know who it is? No. Is it a language class? Um, Um, so then no problem, I'm just not taking into it. I don't know, I think, I was in that, two, they're in 206, so uh, it's a smaller classroom, and it's so hot. She's right? probably saying the same thing about me. Jordan should shut the door. So um, I better be careful, huh? Um, I should come over and slam on this. Um, so, and then independence talk least, right? And, and, and it's a meaningful, that's where the difference seems to really be, if there is a difference at all, right? Mm -hmm. Is that that, that 1.66, uh, those people who call themselves independent um, really do seem to uh, not not to be interested in talking politics as much as as those people who classify themselves as as a D or an R. So, what we want to do is test is to to test that. Um, And I want to walk through how we construct this table with just knowing a few pieces of information about, that is, the mean and the standard deviation. It's, it's, it's useful in just helping to conceptualize what is the between group variation and what group is, what variation is the within group. And then I have, um, I have some example data that we will, I'll have you do these same calculations here in a minute. So the total sums of squares variation can be calculated by first squaring the standard deviation, right? If we square the standard deviation, what do we have? If we square standard deviation, we now have Variance, yeah. And then multiplying variance by n minus 1. And uh, in our case, our total, so this is the standard deviation for Democrats, Independents, and Republicans. Um, the other thing that we can say about our groups is that, that the Independents are more homogenous, right? Their standard deviation is lower, and they they tend to they're more clumped together in terms of their their mean is 1.66 or 1.6 yeah 1.66, and so it's lower, but it's also their the standard deviation is lower, and so they tend to be they tend to be more homogenous in their response to to that question. Where Democrats and Independents tend to probably spread across. <coughs> we have some people that are saying zero, and some people that are saying seven, and some. I was saying three and four with with independence we just have less of that because the standard deviation is is lower than, than both of the uh, Democrats or the independents. So uh, we can take our total standard deviation, square it, which would give us variance here, and then uh, multiply that by our this wise n minus one which our total n is 1,016, 1,015, uh, and that gives us sums of squares total. Sums of squares total is something that we calculated a long time ago when we first started talking about regressions, exactly the same sums of squares. And that sums of squares total is actually this, and this is the, this is the SPSS output that we'd get if we told SPSS to do this one way and over for us. This is the output that it would give us. And this corrected total, this 455.65, is um, this number that we get right here. The differences are just round there. So that's our total. That's our that's our total sums of squares. And what we need to do then is, if we calculate either the within group or the between group variation, we can get the 
we, all, we just need to calculate one of the two and we get the third, right? Because we know that 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 within plus between equals total. So we don't need to calculate both of them, just calculate one of them and then take the, take the difference from the total and you'll have the one that you didn't calculate. Uh, but to get the within group variation, we do a very similar thing to what we just did with the total <coughs> variation. We take the standard deviation for each group, uh, square it, and take it times n minus 1. So the standard deviation for Democrats is 2.16678. 2.16678. I square it to get variance. I take it times n minus 1. Or 602. Add to that the same for independents. Add to that the same for Democrats. Sum all of those up, and that's my error for within group sums of squares. It matches this error in, in this table. 4,511 point five six two. The differences are attributable to rounding. And so we could then take corrected total minus 4,511.562, and it will give us the, um, this is my independent variable, PID, just part of the identification. So this is my independent variable, or the between group factor. And um, we could, uh, the easiest way to get that 53.5 or 0 0.461 is to just, again, subtract corrected total minus um, error. But if you just wanted to do the math because you love math, you could follow my direction from this box. And um, the math is just a little bit different. Um, what we do is determine the square deviation between the group mean and the grand mean, and then multiply the end of each group by its square deviation. Um, and so here's the end for each, so the calculation. I start with the end for each group. So 603, 112, and 301 is the end for each group. And I multiply that by um, the mean for the group. The mean for the group, 2.3566. 2.3566 minus the grand mean, which is 2.3041. And then I just do that math for my other groups. And that will be our sums of squares between. And sums of squares between plus sums of squares uh, within is going to be equal to um, is going to be equal to um, our sums of squares total. And if we put this in the language of regression, sums of squared error is equal to the sums of squares residual and sums of squares between is equal to sums of squares regression. And so which one was sums of squares regression or sums of square error the good sums of square? Regression. Yeah, and so just like sums of squares between would be your good sums of squares. Again, if good is explaining uh, less error, explaining variability in your dependent variable. So far, so good? And we have degrees of freedom that um, look very similar to what we had before. Um, total degrees of freedom are equal to degrees of freedom between group plus 
degrees of freedom within group. And degrees of freedom between group is equal to number of groups minus one. So in our case, it would be equal to two, right? We have Democrat, Independent, and Republicans. So our degrees of freedom is going to be equal to two for between group. And then we have degrees of freedom within group is equal to uh, listwise n minus k. And n is the number of observations in your data. And um, in, in our case, the total number of observations was 1,016. So 1,016 minus um, uh, 3 is 1,013. And that's where the decimal group. And then we sum those up because some dispersion, or degrees of freedom total is equal to between group plus within group. And then to get the, we're, we're trying to get to the F to calculate this, to get to this F value. To get that F value, we need to divide sums of squares between by its degrees of freedom. So this 43.46 divided by 2 is 26.73. And the 4,511 uh, divided by 1,013 is 4.454. And then it's the ratio of those two. So 26.73 divided by 4.54 is going to be equal to 6.001. And if we go back to if we go back to the this is the SPSS output, and we'll find that they, it did exactly the same thing. Our um, between group degrees of freedom is two. Our within group degrees of freedom is 1,013. It divided, um, uh, it divided the sum of squares by degrees of freedom to get the mean square. And then did the same for the uh, within group, free, within group uh, um, sums of squares. And then it gets an F value. And then SPSS is nice enough, smart enough, useful enough to actually give you the F test so you don't have to look it up on an F table. But we looked, we talked about that earlier in the semester where we could take our F value, in this case 6.001, with 2 and 1,013 degrees of freedom and use the F table in the back of your book or the one that you get when you Google F table. And um, you could come up with, well, is that, is that less than my um, critical alpha? And, um, and, and you'd be able to make that calculation. So, um, so far so good. Questions? Before we get to effect sizes, we're going to do um, some example data. Uh, same dependent variable, but in this case, instead of whether they're Democrat, Independent, or Republican, I did level of education. And so what I want you to do is to construct, I even give you the table, I want you to construct this ANOVA table from the data that I give you. And if you have questions, keep my fingers crossed that I have enough. Keep my fingers crossed that I have enough. You were going to talk about editing the host file for maps. Oh, yeah. I, um, I'll do that. Um, after I put, um, let me put my, um, for those of you, can I do this? Uh, can I share? We should share. Yeah. Can okay. you share a few? Yeah. Oh, did you have one? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to just go make copies? What's that? Do you want me to just go make copies? Oh, yeah. I didn't know we could do that. <laughs> Great. I'll sacrifice a couple of prints. Okay. Thank you. Uh, one, two, three, make it five. Thank you.
So let's take whatever 15 minutes or 20 minutes to do those calculations. And Ken, I'll show you how to edit that host file um, maybe after class. Okay, well, there's several next. And I'm a little bit nervous about showing it because if you do it wrong, um, it could kill your computer. And so I don't want to be held responsible or liable. Um, but we'll, if, somebody wants, if somebody wants me to help them, I'll be happy to help them uh, individually instead of doing it in front of the class. So the thing on the wall doesn't do anything? The thermostat? Thanks, Chris.
on the table where it says mean, is that the mean square? Mm -hmm. Done? Do you have an answer to that? No, but we'll <laughs> converge on the correct answer. Okay. What did you get for an F? That's a good place to start. 3.24. So let's see if everybody gets 3.24. People are still working, but anybody else get 3.24? What other values do we get for F? Still working on it? I'm almost there. Okay, sorry. No rush. So we don't have to do anything by hand, though. <laughs> William, what did you get? Nothing yet. Oh. <laughs> what did we get for total sums of squares? Let's start there. That's a place. It's an easy place to start. Total sums of squares, Tyler. Chris? 1544.4. Me too. For total sums of squares, right? Yes. So how did we get that? Let's just make sure that um, we have two people that got it, so it's likely to be right. We can take the standard deviation, 2.62. And take square. the square root of it, right? Square, square it. Square it. Square. Square. We're going to square it. Who got um, within is easier to calculate than between. Um, who calculated within sums of squares, Pavitra? One, four. And so then to get the between, it's just the difference, which is what? 113.21, right? Yeah. Point what? 113, we call it that? Yeah. Brittany, is that what you got? I had one. Well, I actually went and tried to like do the formula calculation, and I ended up getting 118. So it was a little bit off. Could be rounding, could be math. You know, okay, because I did get 118.84. 
When you use the formula, how about if you just did the difference between the two? And it's 113. So it's rounding difference, I assume, but that seems like a lot of rounding. Oh, but I, yeah, I just wanted to do and the formula, let's, let, me, let me go back and look. The formula would be um, n for each group, right? Not n minus 1. Mm -hmm. Times the mean minus the, the group mean, mean, or the total mean. Oh, yeah, the individual mean. Minus and then square that. Yeah. And sum those all together. Mm -hmm. And we get 118. Two people got 118. It's it's this right here. Okay. It's this figuring the between groups uh, is slightly different. It's multiply. Multiply. It should be n. You did n. I forget if I made this data up or if I actually um, came from an analysis that I did. If I made it up, that could be why that there's, but I'm, that could be why the, because the difference is more than rounding. The 118 versus 113 is, seems to be more than rounding. We'll continue that conversation. Uh, we'll, we'll, we're going to go with 113 for now. Um, No, for the between. And then, that, and then I will um, try to correct the record to see if, if I did in fact make the data up. That could be what's leading to the problems. If, if it's not that, um, I'll see if I can find out why the differences are so, so great. Because it should be total minus within is between. And you should be able to calculate between using that same formula and get something reasonably close. We can't. It doesn't appear. And so um, I'll look into that and, and have an answer for you um, next week. But let's, um, let's just sort of assume that it's 113 for now. What are our between group degrees of freedom? Two. And what are the within group degrees of freedom? Two what? 223, it's n minus k. And then we can get the mean uh, uh, by the um, mean sums of squares by just dividing 113 Eight point eight is that what we get for F? Yes. Anybody else get eight point eight? Chris, you got eight point eight. Yeah. Eight point eight with the one fifteen or the one thirteen? With one thirteen. Yeah. I got nine point two six. Yeah. So uh, I, let me get, again. Uh, my apologies. I'll get back to you on uh, if there's some funkiness with how I made up the data or if there's a better explanation. Um, Everybody else get that, an F of 8.8? .8? Brittany, you found out what you're... Yes, I accidentally on the degree of freedom, I used the individual cases and did rather than... Those Figured it out, though? Yes. Okay. And so what did we do with the 8.8? .8? Table, the critical value in the F table, and see 
Which one is greater? And so we call the 8.8 .8 is our obtained uh, F, right? And then we need to determine what is the critical F. And did anybody determine what the critical F is with alpha equals 0.05? F table. Uh, somebody's the F calculator where you probably could put in um, two and two hundred twenty-three. So three point zero three six. What do you get, William? Three point zero six is our critical three point. And that's at alpha is 0.05? And you got that from the book or from a F table? Huh? F calculator, where you put in the degrees of freedom and alpha level, and it gives you a, a critical. Um, and so do we reject the null? Yeah, our, our um, obtained f is greater than the critical f, so we reject the null hypothesis. And so there is a difference, but we don't know where that difference is, right? We still don't know, is, 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 is low education different than um, medium education? Is medium education different than high education? One would assume that at least low education is significantly different than high education, but but uh, we don't know if the other differences are meaningful or not. And so um, feel free to continue to work on these. This is not an in-class kind of thing that I'd give you and have you calculate, but I might give it to you on a take-home exam with some data that, that you could make these same calculations. Um, so you can put that note somewhere as well. So I don't have anything else for today. Um, but I'll stay here, try to help any of you edit your local host file if you want to edit that to speed up SPSS on your Mac uh, or help you finish this. Hopefully it's cooler here next week. Huh? I, I guess so. And usually it's just the opposite. But they were saying that, well, it's, it's uh, I think transitions of the season are always difficult. Do you turn the air on or do you turn the heat on? And yeah, and so. I think it works pretty fast already. But, uh, it does? Uh, they, my uh, what, what? IT guy may have done it already. Open up, open up, is it open already? Open it up and I'll tell you if you can make it faster. That's just, that's, that's, we're not going to make that any faster. Okay. That's, that's faster than mine. That's, notebook is one generation older than mine. Do you have the latest Apple OS on there? Uh, 24. But latest what? Apple OS? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, well, no, not, not it's the... It's one version older. I one, one version, So yeah. you're good. Don't change that because if you change it, it'll probably get slower. Yeah. It's, so the, editing the local host file will not, will not help. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I have. Uh, oh, I'm just curious what I. I have Yosemite. So, and that's, so that's one. The, that's the what, last one. So what's what's Sierra? That? I think is the new one. Uh, yeah. yeah, and that's the one that um, I think there's a. I don't know if it's Sierra, but I'm glad yours worked. Yeah. And when I, mine always used to be faster on a Mac and um, with older versions of um, the the OS. So I think there's something with the new version of OS, but there's just a little edit that you can make. Keep in the back of your mind. Yeah. So, so in other words, uh, don't change. The or rest if of you change it, change the, the if you operator. change it, we'll make the little edit. And well, our, our IT guys really gun ho about you only change operating systems during the summer. Who's this? Oh, well, this is uh, Gaylord. Oh. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Huh. I, I would disagree with that. I'd tell them. To, yeah, I would tell them to. I'm going to change it when I want to, but if it's their machine, I guess you get to do it. Yeah, like, yeah, is it Buddy? The, the, yeah. <laughs> you, 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 know, you know him. I know him. Yeah, I What's his great. name? Buddy Weederman. Oh, I see him on Twitter all the time. Yeah. He's the IT person. Yeah, in, over there at J, over at J School. Yeah. 
Okay. He has his way. If Does he, he have his he, way? He, he likes to he likes to upgrade way too much. I love Buddy. He's a good guy, but he just it's, he gets a little gung ho about that stuff, and it's like I just find something I'm happy with. And oh, you don't working, you, you don't, I don't fool with it. How Especially do you know there's not some work. something that'll make you like it more? Yeah. <laughs> I always like to have the lightest and brightest. So if it's I do too, but I read a lot. Thank you. I read a lot before. Do you? Do it, yeah. I do. I go on the serves and read. I'm on but there always be somebody complaining about it. Yeah. Well, it's you get one, you get someone complaining about it. But when you've got fifteen or twenty people, and then and then I look back at their their previous post, and I trust kind of their judgment or their their opinion, then I'll go with that. Yeah. I'm like you. If it's like one or two, though. How was your grand opening, to Tyler? How was it? Yeah, as good as it could be. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, you're done? Or yeah. one more day? No, well, just for today. I still have Ryan's. Oh, one Friday. more day? Next week? No, Friday. Oh, tomorrow, uh, Friday. Yeah. Next Thursday. So. Good luck. Oh, I'm tired. That's the big thing. I'm just drained and very, very drained. So we'll see. I bet you're just fine. So the uh, grand opening was good? Yeah. Went well. Really big turnout. Yeah. Such surprised. a nice. I was a little surprised who all showed up. Yeah. I mean, Kyle was there. Right. Campus was there. Uh, Bunch of people from the Clark, Clark was there. Clark was there. So, yeah. Nick there? Uh, no, he didn't make it. But I was a little, I, I mean, we walked through the door. I was running late because we had a residential college meeting. And I was hauling ass from there to get to this. And I knew they wouldn't start on time. Obviously, the president's not going to be there. So right. I show up and I come through the corridor and I'm like, oh shit. There was like the whole parking lot was full of people. And I'm like, we were like expecting like maybe 20, maybe 30 people. Uh, well, good. Like 50 or 60 Great. people. Is, like SGA, much is it people. under Frank's area? It's, no, what we did was I kind of worked behind the scenes and got it set up, but I, it had to be a student initiative. And so I really wrote a date for the SGA okay. like. A year and a half ago, oh. and then the funny thing is, Eagle wouldn't allow me to do it. The foundation, I went to the foundation and talked to them. They didn't want to yeah. anything to do with it. And so what I did was I talked the the food bank folks into underwriting this under the 5013C as a nonprofit. And so we're kind of underneath them. Yeah. So that's how we were able to. I was able what to was Legal's concern? Legal was afraid of the 5013C, and I was like, one, I don't see what the problem is. And so they were concerned about funds and how the money allocation. I said, that's easy. We can do it through a foundation account. A lot of other schools do it. UCO did it, and the funny thing about it, it was up for three years. And when we reached out, and when Legal contacted their legal department, their legal department didn't even know that they had a food pantry. <laughs> Uh, and the guy was like on the phone, and we were on the conference call with Heather, myself, and I think two, and there was two other people from legal. We're sitting there, and the guy goes, "What the hell are you talking about?" He goes, "We don't have a food pantry." And we go, "Yeah, you do." And he goes, "Well, I gotta look into this." <laughs> huh. <laughs> and so he was gone? freaking out, and, I, and so he got back. He goes, "Well, there's not much we can do because obviously it's up and running, and they have they signed some paperwork." And they did not you know, allow us to look at it. But he goes, I don't see a problem with it. And so when I, my suggestion, when I went to talk to Guy, Guy just didn't want anything to do with it. Guy is just like, I don't want to touch this. And I go, it has nothing to do with you. I mean, you already done signing a piece of paper. I said, the university will not be liable for any. And he goes, I don't want anything to do with it. So when, when I went back to the, the food bank folks, they go, yeah, we'll do it. And so I and just this is the, it, the Norman Food Bank? For, or Oklahoma. This, oh. is, this is regional food. Okay. And so what we did was I set up a separate foundation account and what happens is it's SGA's responsibility to run, operate, staff it, and then any of the money that comes out to pay for it, we pay for it, but we pay out of a foundation account and then they just pay us back. Yeah. And then out of, we just do a transfer out of it and that's how we were able to skirt. Because I understand we don't want to use obviously state, you know, state funds, you know, and get in trouble, but if we set up, it's just like you know, like a, now they said we set up a GoFundMe account, and so the GoFundMe account's already made two grand. Well, it doesn't take that much to operate this thing. It's right. like the cost may be going in ten thousand a year, maybe if that. Does that include food? Yeah, and so once you open it up, 
and then everybody found out about it, then now everybody's just coming by and bringing food. And so we're oh. getting, just people are dropping stuff off and with the students or faculty students, stuff? faculties, everybody. And so and I think it'll be fine. I mean, it's just getting the word out to students and kind of breaking down that stigma.